Hello there everyone, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this cute music wire work pendant. So we're actually going to be writing the word music in wire and then we're going to add a nice decorative frame around it. And then you can choose to add whatever kind of chain you want to, whether it's pre-made or one that you make yourself. So I chose to make my own chain for my piece here featuring musical notes and if you want to do something similar yourself then I do actually have a previous video where I show how to make these musical notes so I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below. So this is perfect for any music lovers out there just like me so if you want to learn how to make it then keep watching. So I'm going to be using these two different gauges of wire here. First of all I have a 0.8 mil. this is going to be the base wire so the strength of the piece and here I have a 0.3 mil. this is going to be a weaving wire. Now you can also equally use a 0.4 mil. it's completely up to you. So this is the selection of pliers that I'll be using. First of all of course we need some wire cutters, I'm using my flush cutters here and then I'm using my tweezer nose pliers for the finer detail. I also have my round nose pliers here that I'm just going to be using the very tip of to get very little loops. And finally, I've got my six step bell making pliers. Now you can use round nose pliers in place of these. I just like using them because I know exactly what size loop I'm going to get. So then we need to cut some lengths of wire first of all. And here I have a length of my 0.8 mil of about 40 centimeters. We're going to use this to write the word and make part of the frame width. And then I have another length of the 0.8 mil of about 20 centimeters. This we're just going to use to finish off the frame width. And we then also need to cut a length of a 0.3 mil wire here, of about one and a half meter, and this will be the weaving wire. So I then grab my wire here, and I'm working with my tweezer nose pliers first of all, and then I'm going to start towards one end. I will start a little bit in from the end, roughly about five centimeters or so, just so we have that to work with. And then we need to obviously start with the M. So I'm going to take my long end here and bend it back over the top of my pliers. So basically bend it back on itself. So we have this. Now what I want to do is, as you can see between the two wires, or the two lengths rather, there's a gap. I want to close that up. So I'm going to hold on to my wires very close to where the bend is there and put the bend the very back of my pliers to tighten it so basically squeezing the two together now you can find that it'll twist a bit like that and then just twist it back and then continue to tighten it until we basically end up with the wires close together. Then I'm just going to put my pliers down because I then need to separate the two wires. Now I'm doing it so my wires are facing like this. They're on top of each other, not laying next to each other. So they're on top of each other and then I want to basically the bottom one which is the short end I'm going to put my nail against and keep it in place and then I'm going to pull the other one away from it. So pulling it out to the side Instead of pulling them apart, I'm pulling it kind of away from the other one. And it's having done that bend at the very top there, that creates a nice kind of point to the letters, I find, instead of just doing a regular bend in the wire with your pliers. Now, obviously, this is technically, you could say, one half of the M. And this is going to be the midpoint, so we obviously need to do the other half. So just pull this out to the point where you feel it's the right angle. And then the midpoint here, I'm just doing it by eye. I'm going to place my pliers just above where the midpoint is going to be. Then I take the long end and bend my wire now underneath but still back on itself. So again we get that where the wire is laying kind of double layered but there's a gap and again I want to close that gap just like before. Just because we do have two wires on top of each other so it's kind of double layered but obviously if we have all this space between the wires that just adds extra unnecessary space. 
So that's why I like to kind of tighten them up. And then we also need to separate these wires. So I always like to kind of bring it back in the position how it's supposed to sit. So the M is going to be like this. So I'm going to again keep hold of this now short little wire at the top with my nail and then pull the long length here to the side. So and then basically we're going to end up a little bit with a 90 degree angle between these two lengths in the middle. Something a bit like that. You can adjust anything you want to. Now we then need to make the other side. So I'm going to judge now where I need to place my pliers. That's going to be in relation to the first side there. Because obviously I want it to be as even across as possible. So I'm placing the pliers, then bending the wire again back on itself, but this time over the top again. And then I'm going to close up the gap. Avoid the twist and close it some more. And again, pulling them apart from each other, doing it sideways. So keep hold of the short wire that's underneath while I'm then pulling this away from it. And then you can already see what's actually going to be the final M because now this wire is coming straight down and that's obviously technically now creating the M so it looks a little something like that we want to then move from here straight on to the U and then you want to just judge basically how high you want the letters as well so I'm going to place my apply. I'm not bothering with this end just yet I'm going to go back to that once I've kind of done the word, just leaving that tail there for now. But then I'm going to now place, instead of placing my pliers in this direction here, kind of flat on the wire or the word letter, like I have been doing, and now I want to just flip it to the side. To the point where the bottom of the M is going to be. And then still they'll bend the wire back on itself. And this is basically just going to create space in between the letters. So that's what we're doing now. We're moving on to the U. So, something a bit like that. Obviously make any adjustments you want to along the way. Better to do that as you go. Now, I then want my U to be come halfway up the M because obviously the M is a capital and I'm just going to make the rest regular small letters so we need to double the wire again double layer so I'm going to place my pliers just below about midway up the M and then bring this wire back on itself again on top now coming straight down again I'm going to then close up this Base. Just get a proper grip here. Close up the space and then this will basically be one side of the U. There we go. And the wire is now coming straight down again. Just correct straightness of that so it looks a little something like that now we then need to obviously make the bottom part of the U so for this I'm going to use my six step lambing pliers to help me make the curves in the U 
and I'm using the second smallest step in this case, obviously. Just use whatever suits it, and also depending on size, or you could obviously use round nose pliers or anything else you have handy. You can also just do it freehand. I just kind of like sometimes the consistency you can get from using something like pliers. Now I start to bring the wire around, but don't bring it all the way around because as you can see, where I had to place my pliers is gonna make the bottom of the U substantially lower than the M, which is not what we want. So I'm just getting the initial shape and place their curve. And obviously you can see it's because I couldn't get my pliers further up. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the wire with my pliers and then start to roll it. So I'm holding on to the rest of it and then I just roll the wire upwards until basically it becomes, the bottom of the U becomes level with the bottom of the M. Now of course, some of the other things can move a little bit out of place, so just keep adjusting it. And then just check if you need to then roll it up a little bit further. You can do that until you feel that the bottom of both letters fit each other nicely. And then you can see also the length of wire is pretty much already coming up the other side naturally. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So what I'm going to do now is grab my tweezer nose pliers again because we then want to basically, obviously you could say finish off the U. So this side also needs to kind of have a top the same as the other side, but we then also need to start making the transition for the next letter. So you just want to place your pliers. Basically, so once the wire is bent, it's going to equal the other side. So just slightly below, because when we bend the wire, it just adds a little bit of height. So now I'm bringing the wire behind there. And again, tighten that up. And also when you tighten that, it just adds just a tiny little bit of height. Make sure to get that nice and tight. And then just adjust it. And then you can see that's now the top of the U on both sides. So we have that. And then it's the transition, like I said, to the next letter, which is, of course, the S. So I'm going to grab onto kind of the bottom of my U, but part of that is my long wire that I'm working with. And then I'm just going to start bringing this out towards the side. So just for now, something like that, and you can see the bottom there is going to start to come towards the next letter. I'm going to then place my tweezer nose pliers at the top. So as you can see right now, it's kind of coming out at a bit of an angle. So just turn and hold your piece however you need to. So I'm placing it again, my pliers, just below where I want the bend to be. So that once we bend this, it's going to be the very top of the S. It's going to be level with the top of the U. And this is going to be bent. Again, back on itself. And I'm bending it over the top here. So like that. And of course, like the other times, I'm just going to tighten that up. Because I want to make sure to get that top point nice and sharp as you can see if you twist like that just twist it back and then once we have that I want to then again open this up so I'm gonna keep hold of the bottom layer you could say with my nail and then I'm going to pull the top one here away from it, sideways, to the point where that comes 
straight down more or less. That's something a bit like that. And you can see we get that nice top part pretty sharp because of how we made that bend. So just pull it apart a bit there so we have some space underneath. Because to make the bottom of the S I'm gonna just go a little bit below that bottom line that goes across here because I just want it a little bit elongated. So I'm bending the wire back on itself and this time underneath. Again, tighten it up. And then the reason that I made it a little bit longer is because I then want to grab onto that very bottom bend that we just made and tightened with the tip of my pliers, try and hold on to everything else, and then just slightly bend it inwards, basically towards the U, you could say. Now obviously you might just want to move more wire than you want to, but then just bring it back And then just bend that very tip towards the U. Let's see how it looks. So it's not quite level yet, but you can see the gist of it. So we've got kind of a little kick on the bottom there. Something bit like that I think. Just make sure everything is level. But there we go, that's basically the S complete. And then we need to make the transition for the next letter. In this case here I'm just kind of making sure the wire goes behind the other wire kind of following the path and then just close to the top I'm placing my pliers here along both wires and then I'm going to just have it come out basically from the side of the S a little something like that and then that's going towards the next letter which of course is the I and I'm going to straight away place my pliers where the top of the eye is going to be, or just before, and then need to bend this wire back on itself over the top tighten it up And like I said, this is going to be the very top of the eye. So now, to separate the wires, I'm going to keep hold of the wire underneath with my nail. And then I'm pulling this sideways out to come straight down to basically create the eye. So you can see it already there. Make sure it's nice and straight. And I'm not going to worry about the dot over the eye just yet. We're going to come back to that. But moving on for the last letter. I just want to create the bottom of the eye. Again, that's going to be level with the bottom of the others. So place your pliers and then bring the wire back on itself. This time underneath. Tighten it up. Like so. And then to have the wire come... First of all, we completed the eye. Minus the dot, of course. 
but to then have the transition to the next letter, the final letter. Again, I'm going to place my pliers on both of the lengths there, both of the layers, close towards the top, and then just bring that wire straight out to the side, so it's naturally coming towards the next letter, which will be the C. And technically this is already kind of starting the top part of the C. So place the pliers a little bit further out because if you then imagine we need to come back in and then have a wire then create the C shape. And this time I'm bringing the wire over the top back on itself. Tighten it up. And then just kind of have this come straight out towards the side. Now again, what we can then do here is grab our bail making pliers again, just to help make that curved shape that we need. So I'm bringing the wire around it. In this case here, I'm just kind of using the second smallest. So it doesn't have to be that we use this to create the whole C shape itself. We can just kind of use it to get the curves in there. So like that, and then again, go to the bottom and then can't really get the pliers all the way in there. So just go as far as you can and then just start to roll it. Until we get the bottom level with the other letters. Let's have a little look. So basically, get that C shape in place. Now also, what I then just like to do is, because the top there, I kind of elongated it a little bit, because I then like to grab the tip of it and then just bend it downward towards kind of the center of the C a bit, you could say. And then open it back up if you need to. Just to give it a little bit more shape. Kind of like we did with the S there when we just kicked in the very tip, you could say. So just do that if you want to. But then otherwise, this is basically then complete. Now obviously, the C, the Y just kind of continues there. So, what I then just do with that is just to kind of finish off the word. I place my pliers on the bottom there, roughly equivalent to where the bend on the top is. In this case then, bend the wire back on itself. Now underneath. And then of course, want to tighten that up. Right at the back of the pliers. Because, again, you can then kick in that bottom one also a little bit to make it kind of equal to the top. And then I like to separate the long length here from the C and literally bring it out to the side. So I'm keeping hold of everything else and then bringing it out, which I think finishes off that letter nicely. And we then basically kind of finished off the word more obviously. And also we then have this length of wire to then continue with. Now what I'm then just gonna do before I continue using this length of wire here is just finish off the M basically. Cause if you remember when we started out, we left a bit of a longer tail here 
and I just said to leave that so I'm going to deal with that now just so it doesn't kind of get in our way when we're going to continue using the long wire and bring it around so again I'm going to take my six step bell making pliers and I'm going to use the second smallest step and I'm going to then place this on my wire so again when I bring this tail around the pliers it's going to end up being level with the bottom of the other letters. So just bending it a bit and let's just have a little look. I do prefer to look from the correct angle. I feel my brain copes with that the best. Probably looks pretty good level wise. And then bringing it the wire here all the way around to basically create a full circle. Let me just check it again before we finish anything off completely. I think that looks pretty good. Then moving on to my round nose pliers because now I just want to create a tiny little circle within the circle almost you could say. So I'm going to use the very tip of my round nose pliers to get it as small as possible really and place it kind of right at the top of the circle that we just made if obviously we're looking from the front so place the pliers and then just bring the tail further around in this case now continuing around these round nose pliers here and also do then a complete circle so the wire there overlaps itself now we've almost made basically just a little spiral there minus obviously needing to cut off the excess so I'm taking my flush cutters and cutting off basically right where that crossover point of the wire starts and I'm putting my, the back of my pliers against the end of the wire that's going to be left on the piece and then cutting off right at that crossover point like that get rid of the end and then we're just going to have, you can kind of see and you can also feel it, the end just sticks out a little bit. So we just need to flatten that down. Just like this. And then the end of the wire there is basically budding up against the side of itself. So it kind of just gets rid of it as well. So that's now that end or that side of the M finished as well. So now I'm just going to go back to the length that I have left there on the other side that long length of wire that I've been working with to create the word and I'm basically going to continue using this adding a bit more of design to the word here and basically almost a bit like a frame around the word and I'm also then going to take the chance in that case to add in the dot over the eye as we're going so I'm coming from the very bottom part of the C there and it's kind of continuing in a curve going upwards and I'm going to keep that curve and then bring it further around kind of over the top of the word and just have it be a soft curve and you achieve that better if you kind of grab further out on the wire and move it into position that you want that gives you kind of a nicer softer curve now this is now where I want to take the opportunity to add in that dot over the eye so I'm just going to get my wire into position and obviously how close you want this kind of little frame that we're doing around the word is up to you but something like this as you can then see this point here where the wire sits basically above the eye I'm then going to grab my six step bell making pliers again round nose pliers are fine using the smallest step obviously it depends as well how large you want this dot to be basically so how obvious you want it to look and then place the pliers where the dot's going to be and then bring the wire around the pliers all the way create that full circle and let's just have a little look so we can see We've now basically added in the dot over the eye, but it's incorporated into kind of the frame 
and design we're doing around the word. And continuing from there, again, making sure I'm adding or have a nice curve on my wire. And then going to go, you can just hold, obviously, your word and how you're holding it, change it around however you need to. I'm going further over the top, now over more towards the M. Make sure there's a nice curve in place. And then I need to start coming around the side of the M to come down below the word. So again, get a gentle curve around the side. And we're slowly getting our wire then below the word. Something a bit like this. And then around the bottom here, I also kind of like to add a bit of flourish, you could say. So a bit of another little loop, not because obviously we need now a dot over an eye or anything, but just to kind of make it a little bit of a cohesive design. So it's not just that single one. And I kind of like to do it under the M here also because there's a bit of space under there. So grabbing the same pliers with the same step and placing it on my wire, bringing it all the way around to create that full circle so it overlaps itself. And then obviously have the wire kind of come out and continue in the same direction as it was. We've then just added in that little loop along the way. And then bring it further around to basically where we started out making this frame, or you could say where the word ends. I think just bring that up a little bit more. And then Moving over towards the end of the word there. The nice curve in place. And then I basically want to see about finishing it off. And I also want to do that with a little curl or loop, you could say, whatever you want to call it. So I'm basically wanting that to sit, end up sitting kind of where this whole frame starts in the first place. So if you just look where that's going to be, place my pliers again the same step, bring the wire around all the way so we get a little circle there. Now we should just check you're happy with everything before we cut anything off. And then what I'm going to do is, because we then have this little loop that we just created at the very end that sits perfectly and meets up with the very beginning of the frame, that can also be a connection point to kind of make the whole frame a bit sturdier. But obviously, just need to get rid of the wire. So same principle, cut off where the wire starts to overlap itself. So like that, and then just make sure to close it up, flatten it down basically. And then we have another little loop and a finished word with a little embellished frame around it. So we then need to complete the frame around a little music word here. So for that, obviously we have this made already. I'm then gonna grab my short length of 0.8 mil that I cut ready as well. And then also my 0.3 mil length or 4 mil, 0.4 mil if you're using that. Now what I'm gonna do is first of all, just attach my 0.3 mil here to this separate piece of wire. And I'm just gonna leave a little tail maybe about 15 to 20 centimeters or so. Just so we kind of, if we need that at the end, just to finish off with. But then I'm just gonna wrap this around that base wire twice. 
just like that and make sure that those wraps are nice and tight so I'm just gonna push them together if I need to with my pliers so like this and I'm then doing it towards one end but again just leaving a little bit of wire on the base wire there now I'm gonna bring in my music piece and we need to start attaching these together so what I'm gonna do is I'm just starting from the point here where the frame is kind of not connected so where we started and finished the frame and I'm gonna then put this on the outside of that frame. Now the reason that I'm leaving a bit of a tail here is because I'm gonna just start a bit on the side so we just need that short length to be able to finish it off at the end because we're better off doing that at the end once everything is more secure. But I'm then, like I said, placing my wire here, the new wire on the outside of the frame and on the part that's coming right after the word. So not the kind of bottom part that's still a bit loose just yet. And leaving that bit of a tail, hold on to it. Now it's gonna be a bit loose and fiddly right now, but that's just until we get it more attached. I then bring my weaving wire here down to sit just basically where the two wires meet up. And then what I'm gonna do is this tail, just try and kind of get it out of the way a little bit so we don't get tangled up. I'm then gonna take my weaving wire and bring it through, so over the top of both of the wires and through the frame, down through it. So basically we're gonna wrap around the wire again, but now it's around both wires here, not just this single one. Make sure they're laying flat next to each other. And I'm gonna do that again twice like before, so one more time, down through the frame, put all the wire through. And then you can see we have wrapped around both of them. Now this is gonna basically be the pattern of the weave that we're gonna be doing. Wrapping around this outer wire twice by itself and then around both of them twice. So we've just done around both of them twice. That means I've gotta do around the outer one here by itself twice. Just need to push the wraps together with my pliers. So that was once and then twice. Now obviously what you can see is the frame is curved because we've made the shape that we wanted. But this wire here is straight so we're going to also need to start shaping this following the shape of the frame that we already have. So I'm going to do that simply as I go. So I'm not going to go around this whole thing and kind of create, replicate the shape now. I find it works better if we do it as we're making the weave here, the wraps. So what I do is once I've made the two single wraps around the outside wire, I then gently push that wire against the other wire to start following the shape a bit. So just basically get the similar curve in place. And then once that's done just that little bit at a time, I'm gonna just bring my weaving wire through the frame again, because now we need to wrap around both wires to catch them and connect them. So once and twice. Again, making sure the wraps are nice and flat next to each other. And then two times around the outer one by itself. Like that. And then again, I can tell that there's a bit too much of a gap between the two wires to wrap around both of them. So again, I'm just going to bring this outer wire a bit further in to again replicate and follow the shape that's already there. And then the wire's in place to be able to wrap around both of them again. So this is basically what we're gonna be doing. Now the only thing that's different along the way is we're gonna to need to add some loops into the frame so obviously we can attach something and have it hanging. And then also sometimes we'll run into these loops that already exist. So I'm just gonna to get to the point where I'm gonna be adding in the first loop. 
So now I've gotten to that point because I'm going to have a loop kind of in this top corner on the right and then also the, an equivalent loop on the left side here. So just kind of on the two top corners, obviously they're rounded, but you can kind of get the idea of it. So to do that, I'm going to be taking my six step bell making pliers or you can use our nose pliers, it doesn't matter. And what we're going to do is add the loop on this outer wire. So I'm just going to try and grab onto that. Now obviously you can't get it all the way in there, the pliers, because it's right close to the other one. But just get it as far in as you can. And then I'm using the smallest step on the pliers here to make sure the loop isn't too large. And then I'm just going to bring the wire around as much as I can. And as you can see, it's a little bit further in to where I want it to be. So now that I've got a little bit of the loop going, I can grab onto the wire and then roll it further. Because like I said, I couldn't get the pliers all the way in. So that's where we use the rolling technique. And then once it's pretty much in position there, I'm going to obviously just complete the loop by bringing the wire all the way around and basically out in the direction that it was before. So it's more or less the exact same as before, except we've now added in a loop along the way. Now we then need to obviously continue weaving, but we have this loop kind of a little bit in the way now. So what I'm going to do is basically now we just need to wrap around the inside wire, basically if you're looking at it there below the loop. It's just to get from the one side of the loop to the other side. So just go around the inner wire until we wrap around enough till we get to the other side of the loop there so we can pick back up the weave that we were doing before. And once we reach the other side of the loop, just pick back up the weave like I said. So I'm just going to start out wrapping around both of them. You can see that's going to sit right after the loop. Again, do two wraps here because that was the same weave that we were doing before. And now go back to wrapping around the outside one by itself. So we're only just doing the inside one by itself when it's to get underneath the loops that we're making here on the outside frames or part of the frame. And then I just need to bring this in a little bit. Now, obviously, you can see we're making our way towards the first loop that's already in the frame. And then what we need to do, it's the same principle as everything else. We need to still just keep following the frame here. And then to be able to do that, where that loop is already in the frame, I'm going to get my tweezer nose pliers. And because, as you can tell, it's kind of a little angle that we have if we ignore the loop on the inside, because... We don't obviously need to follow the loop. So I'm going to just grab onto the wire. And then we basically want to add an angle into it. So I'm bringing it back outward. And having added that angle, you can then see it's going to then end up laying in that little corner almost that's created in the frame from making the original loop. And the wire is coming back out so we can then start to follow this next curved part. So that's basically all we want to do. And again, obviously we want to run into the loop on the bottom side, but then we just continue. Just get the wire in position here. So whatever space you have now, obviously, because you can kind of say it's the same principle as this loop here to get to one side from one side of the loop to the other side. What you can do is literally just wrap around this outer wire until we get to the other side. Well, we can again then wrap around both of them, which I think I've reached now. So go through to wrap around both of the wires so we capture them again and just pick back up 
to weave. Now you just want to continue like this, go all the way to the side and remember on this, if we're looking at it from the right angle, top left corner of it, we also need to add a similar loop that we did here so we can hang it from a chain or something. So keep going like that, move all the way around, obviously account for that loop, same as what we just did here, and make it towards the end of the frame. So now I made it all the way around here and more or less almost finished off the frame. You can just see though that it's still open down there. So that's literally what we've got to deal with now. So that's why I left tails on all the wires, both the base wire there, but also the actual original weaving wire, because we just got to kind of use those to finish off the ends. Now what I want to do is make sure that the bottom of this loop here that comes just after, or curve rather, the C is going to meet up with the top of the loop that's just below it. So I also want to make sure that those two parts connect. So to do that, I just want to finish off the initial side here where I started out. So I'm just going to get that wire. So that's why I left a bit of a longer tail so that I can use that to basically just continue the weave. So I'm just going to continue that and again follow around until I get to the point where those two pieces of wire meet up. So now I reach that point there, you can see where this wire overlaps where the loop and then that curve meet up. So what I'm just going to do is just switch to wrapping around just on this inner wire, so kind of on the curve that's just after the C, just once or twice. Bringing that around, making sure I still push them nice and close together and then what I'm going to do is go in with my flush cutters and cut off the excess of this tail of the 0.8 mil. So I'm going to cut it literally right after the weave because that's where it meets up with those two wires like I mentioned. So basically the end of the wire that I just cut there is going to more or less be sitting with the end up against the loop. So if we kind of imagine this is the loop, then the wire is going to, the end of it is going to be up against it like that. So that is also a way of getting rid of it. Now what I then just want to do is use this weaving wire to literally just connect the two together as well. So this becomes a solid piece. So I'm just going to then basically use the loop as the top wire instead. That's kind of replaced the one we just cut off. So I'm going to wrap these two together now. Just like we've been doing in the weave. We're going through that loop now. So I know that this is how it's going to sit. Now you can see I have the other end of my base wire and it's kind of a little bit in the way so I just want to deal with that. So let's see where we are. I think I have space to just do another two wraps around this outer base wire by itself. I'm then going to go and Take my flush cutters, cut off the excess. Just make sure it's in the right position there. First of all, the excess of the weaving wire. Just make sure to squeeze that down. And then just like before, because this kind of comes underneath the other wires, I can literally go in, cut off that base wire right after where the weave ends. So I'm kind of putting my flush cutters up against the weave and cut off 
the wire because when we then flatten it because obviously it was coming behind but then just flattened together put it into position it's gonna basically again the end butt up against the side of the other wire and that's kind of a bit seamless looking as well so it's almost going to look like the frame is continuous all the way around but obviously we have the ends down here but it just looks very seamless so all I want to do now is just finish off this connection point so wrapped around just making sure everything is flat and exactly sitting now how we want it to so make sure that's nice and tight and then you basically just need to finish off this weaving wire as well, that's the final thing and you want to make sure to do that oops, it's getting caught on the letters around a single base wire, so make sure you do some wraps just push that nice and tight around a single base wire before you cut off a weaving wire because that is more secure it would be less likely to come undone or anything so I'm just wrapping around this single base wire here two or three times is fine make sure they're nice and tight and then all that's left to do is go in and also cut off the excess of that cut that off, make sure to just flatten the end down So we don't have any wires sticking out that can obviously catch or scratch on anything so there we go and that is basically now the pendant done and we have connected it down there we can then use these loops to attach whatever kind of chain that we want so that's how you make this cute little music wire work pendant and just for reference this measures approximately four and a half by two and a half centimeters but of course you can choose to make it whatever size you want to just remember to account for that in the length of wire that we'll need so i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial thank you so much for watching it and i'll see you in the next one